This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I want to do in this video is sort of do a follow up um, to the politics video that we put out uh, a few weeks ago. Um, because in that video, what I mentioned was basically if you're getting most of your news, your main source of news being mainstream media, then you're basically going to be left out in the dark, right? And we sort of talked about some of the things that were going on in that video and um, and whatnot. And um, I had a few people uh, leave comments and send me messages saying, uh, you know, if you know we're not supposed to get our news from mainstream media, then where do we get our news, right? Uh, so people were asking me uh, what some of my main sources of news are. Right, and I replied to people, and the question kept on coming up. So I figured uh, it was a good idea to put a video together and sort of give you uh, some links, some sites, some people uh, share with you some of the sources um, where I get my information from. May it be economics or politics. These are specific, almost strictly economics, politics related. Okay. Um, so I figured I'd share this with you just in case you're interested and you do want to, you know, expand beyond um, where it is that you are getting your information from right now. Okay. Um, just a small disclaimer. Um, I don't agree with everything uh, that all of these sources share. Um, there isn't any one particular source that I agree with everything that they share, right? Um, so take the information coming from these sources, if you want, with a grain of salt, if you want, layer it with other your, other sources of information that you may have. That's what I basically do. Um, you know, if I'm following a certain topic, I don't rely on one source to give me all the information. I sort of jump around a fair bit. And you might notice uh, that with uh, some of these links that I'm, that I'm going to be sharing with you, some of these sources that I'm going to be uh, listing, okay? Um, so basically what I did is sort of break this down into two main categories. Uh, the first category, my main category that I always go to is my trusted sources of information. And these are just individuals, people, right? Uh, they're not uh, associated with any organization that I follow, right? So some of these people have jumped around from different organizations, different groups, different uh, channels, I guess, um, different publications. Uh, some of them have their own website uh, or their own YouTube channel where they're making streaming video, updated news and stuff like this, okay? Um, so the first type of sources that I go to are trusted sources that I found throughout the years um, that I, you know, some of these, I check out almost everything they put out, uh, not necessarily from beginning to end, not its entirety, uh, the stuff they put out, but definitely uh, what interests me or what I'm following. If they put out a article or some kind of streaming news uh, summary or whatnot, um, I, do tend, I do tend to uh, read or watch uh, the entirety of whatever they put together regarding this, regarding certain topics. And I do uh, skim through, if not watch the whole thing of the rest of the stuff that they put out, okay? So the first type of uh, uh, source that I have is individuals, uh, people that I trust. And that's huge, journalist, analyst, whatever they might be, right? And the second type of news that I have here is... Uh, basically either programs or sites that I go to, to either read articles or watch broadcast roundtables or summary or interviews or whatnot, okay? And again, um, I don't agree with everything all of these people have to say or all these sources have to say, uh, but I do pay attention to them because I believe they're authentic, okay? So, and um, one other thing I'll mention is, if you're interested in following the stuff, uh, you know, seeing who some of these people are, I will provide the links in the description of this video. Uh, so there will be links in the description pointing towards whoever I am listing here. Okay. Now, uh, as far as journalists, analysts, uh, individuals that I follow, and I basically check out everything that they put out, 
to see if I'm gonna wash the whole thing or whatnot. Okay, um, and this is not in any specific order. I'm not organizing this from the best to the worst or most common to the least that I go to. It's just randomly put together. Okay, some of these I follow way more. Uh, check out more of their material. Some of them I check out everything they put out, right? Uh, and I'll leave that up to you if you you know if you if their information resonates with you or whatnot. Okay. Uh, as far as individuals go, uh, Paul Craig Roberts. I check out almost everything that he puts out, um, and he's been around. He's old school. He's been around a long time. He was in Reagan's administration, and he puts out a lot of. Uh, articles and he does get interviewed a lot so i you know whenever he puts out a new interview video interview whoever's interviewing him i watch that 100 percent, and i do read almost all of his articles that he puts out uh it's a great source of info politics geopolitics specifically and he's really straight out he just lays it out the way he sees it right uh there is no agenda there for him no secondary agenda anyway um Another person that I check out uh, is Richard Wolf, and specifically I check out um, the stuff he puts out on uh, Democracy at Work, where he does a monthly summary of what's going on on, a, on the economic front, okay, then politics as well, but a lot of economics. Uh, so he gives a, like an hour and a half lecture or something, a talk, and summarizes all the stuff that he's gathered throughout the month, okay? It's a good source of info. Um, another person that I check out, and uh, you would have heard me mention him before um, through either, you know, how to read a textbook where we took a look at one of his books or through other stuff that I've, other videos that I put out, and that's Chris Hedges. And right now, um, he's with, he's on RT and he's got his own program. It's called On Contact with Chris Hedges. Uh, well worth checking out and he jumps around a lot uh, goes local and global uh, well worth it well worth it okay another person that I check out almost everything that he puts out um, regarding his main channel is James Corbett um, and uh, he does amazing analysis and again he's really straight out he he tells it the way he sees it and he doesn't pretend to be know-it-all or know everything about a certain topic. He does know a lot about certain topics, that's for sure. But he does a lot of interviews and brings a lot of people on onto his show and talks to them. Um, and it's very much worth checking out. And he does have a secondary site, secondary information with the extras and stuff. And I sometimes do check those out as well. Uh, another person... Um, that huge respect uh one of the best journalists out there and 100 percent sincere uh very passionate about her work is abby martin okay and right now she's um has her own show called empire files and she's with talasura from venezuela and that's where it's being broadcast or that's the hosting company where he's putting her show together and she was with the rt before and someone else before that she was independent before that um, but her stuff is worth checking out um, i do tend to watch at least segments of everything that she puts out and the stuff that i'm really into i watch the whole thing 100 percent um, another amazing show 100 uh, percent real 100 uh, percent worth checking out is um, the laura flanders show and she's a journalist that's been around for a long time. And um, again, she's sincere. Uh, she brings a lot of people onto her show and talks to them and interviews them. Um, well, well worth checking out, well worth checking out. A lot of um, local activi activists and activities um, with Laura Flanders, okay. Um, another person, uh, a journalist, uh, he's Brazilian. Uh, and he's lived in Asia a lot, and he's had an amazing perspective on Asia. Uh, just basically, if you want to know what's going on with Asia and all the economics involved there, and what's, what's going on geopolitically, uh, Asia and South America is Pepe Escobar, and his articles are absolutely fantastic. Um, he's got an interesting sense of humor, um, and he does get interviewed a lot, 
uh, on different shows. So you will catch them. Same with uh, Paul Craig Roberts. Uh, their interviews are well worth watching. And he does have lectures out as well. And his lectures are well worth watching, especially the economic stuff that he talks about in regards to Asia. Another uh, journalist, which you know blows most journalists out of the water with the in-depth uh, articles that he puts together is Max Blumenthal. And he digs deep investigative journalism as best. And uh, his articles are well worth reading. And uh, Max Blumenthal as well gets interviewed a fair bit with different um, different sites, a lot of it independent, because a lot of these people you won't find in the mainstream media. Um, and if you did in the past, you won't find them anymore, um, most likely because um, it doesn't fit the narrative of the propaganda coming out from the mainstream media. So uh, Max Blumenthal, for sure, check out, especially if he's being interviewed on any channels, um, any shows that you're following. Um, another analyst, uh, geopolitics, uh, global mainly, uh, would be Tariq Ali. And he's got an amazing perspective on, um, a good perspective on the Middle East and Asia, as well as South America. He knows his stuff inside out and he's been around for a long, long time. Okay, well worth reading his articles. And he does have uh, um, sort of lectures, talks that he does either, it's sort of irregular, weekly, bi-weekly, um, he puts them out and he talks about geopolitics, global anyway, um, in large part. Um, another person, uh, which is 100% worth checking out is uh, Norman Finkelstein, or Finkelstein. Uh, very few people know the Middle East better than him. I don't know anyone that knows the Middle East better than him. Uh, and the stuff that he puts out is as straight up as you can get. Uh, he paints a pretty grim picture uh, of what's going on in the world, rightfully so, because the, there are things that are happening that are pretty grim, right? Um, so those are some of the main ones that I look up, uh, if not daily, weekly, 100% monthly, I do visit them and see what they've put out. Uh, some of these put, people put out um, multiple stuff per week. So I do visit them on a at least a weekly basis to check out what they've put out. Um, two other people that I have checked out a lot in the past, and um, I do tend to check out when they put out extensive articles, um, in-depth articles, really, and some of them, especially when they're being interviewed uh, at, on shows. Uh, one of them would be Noam Chomsky, more so in the past than in the present. And the other one would be uh, Seymour Hirsch, okay. And Seymour Hirsch's articles, I tend to read whatever he puts out because he does really in-depth analysis, uh, <laughs> sort of investigative journalism. Uh, you know, he's one of the grandfathers of investigative journalism and his in-depth articles are well worth reading. Okay. So those are sort of the individuals that I follow no matter where they're going. You know, if they change their shows, Chris Edges just started on contact a few months ago. Uh, well, within the last year anyway, before that he was, uh, he was being interviewed a lot. He didn't have his own talk show. But he put out a lot of articles on different sites. So I would definitely follow that and read that. And if you want to get a feel for Chris Hedges, Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt, um, the book that he did with Joe Sacco, uh, absolutely fantastic. And if you want to know what's going on globally, uh, he pretty much sums it up with uh, um, sacrifice zones in the, that book, right? Days of Destruction, Days of Revolt. Um, two other people that I do follow, uh, but they're not, I, I don't know if to call them journalists, but um, they share information, their perspective, and they're political cartoonists, okay? And political cartoons are huge. They, um, they provide a lot of information just in one image, right? It's the same goes, what is it, thousand, 
a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, a political cartoon is worth a thousand, I wouldn't say thousand articles, but dozens of articles, political articles. Um, one of them is Mr. Fish, and he's sort of, I guess, left-leaning. Um, and I like his work. Uh, not all of it, but I do like his work. And the other one is uh, Ben Garrison, and I guess he's right-leaning, and I like his work as well. And not all of it but I like his work. So it's a really good idea with the political cartoons to get uh, both sides of the spectrum, okay? Well worth watching, or well worth uh, uh, tracking down and taking a look at those uh, political cartoons that they put out. Um, as far as news sources, that sort of aggregated news sources that share a lot of information and provide daily briefings of what's going on in the world, um, one of them is the Real News Network uh, that I check out every day, multiple times a day because they load on, constantly load on articles. And they give news briefs and they also interview a lot of people uh, from all sides of the political spectrum. So it uh, gives you a really nice broad overview of what's going on in the world. Um, you could consider it left-leaning, uh, but they do have right in there as well. Uh, and it's a good source of info. Um, and just one of the uh, one thing regarding Real Newsnet, one of the producers of Real Newsnet is uh, Paul Jay. And Paul Jay was one of the producers for a show that was on Canadian news that was called Counterspin, CBC. Uh, I believe it was on CBC. Um, and it was an amazing show. If you can find archives of that show, uh, it was called Counter Spin. Uh, it ran from 1998 to 2004, and they canceled it because it was sort of a anomaly as far as mainstream news goes, even in Canada, because it was providing a perspective on the world that um, brought people from each side of the issue together, a round table, and then audiences, and people would debate, and then. Uh, they would ask questions from the audiences were absolutely magnificent and it wasn't going to last long and uh, I basically stopped watching cable mainstream news um, when that show got cancelled the last episode you know once it finished I turned off news uh, cable news mainstream news and it's a fantastic show if you can track it down um, it was so good actually that for the I guess a year uh, I was videotaping uh, all their episodes, all their shows on to, or at least a few months anyway, towards the end, because I knew it wasn't going to last very much longer. Uh, the discourse was uh, too real to be on mainstream news. Uh, you know, it wasn't the agenda of the propagandists to have this. It didn't fit their narrative, right? So I actually videotaped the last few months of that that show and i have them on vhs at some point i'll upload those and create a torrent of them and release them under the pseudo name i guess because i guess they're all copyrighted still um uh, back to the news sources that i follow uh another one is uh, democracy now um uh, daily or on weekdays i guess five days a week uh, they do news summaries and they do segments focus on certain issues and I do follow them um, check out democracy now on a daily basis and again I don't agree with everything being shared on all of these sites um, but I but I like the authenticity of it the, the the energy that's put into it because they are trying to be real and present the information as they see it okay uh, and Amy Goodman huge respect to Amy Goodman uh, especially with the stuff she did in Latin America with the uh, cover she's done there and the Middle East as well right and locally uh, within the United States um, another news source that I follow I guess this could be considered to be underground but everything's underground if you're covering anything real right uh, if mainstream is mainstream right it's, it's mainly propaganda but Anything that's covering anything that's happening in the real world is should be considered on the ground from well for the last few years anyway, right? It's been taken out of the discourse of the mainstream media. Um, would be Submedia TV Stimulator. 
he's actually based in Vancouver and he did some work. He came off of Democracy Now. He was working at Democracy Now for a while and um, his stuff is pretty raw uh, and is straight up uh, raw in terms of he doesn't really hold back on what he shares. Uh, and it's good to have that perspective and it's well worth checking out his stuff. I do check out all the stuff that he puts out. Um, another news source that I check out is Telesura. Um, and I, for Telesura, their YouTube channel, I really like the news briefs that they put out uh, from the Global South, I think they call it. I can't remember what they call it. But basically, it's like a few minutes of news coverage summarizing everything that's going on in the world. Uh, well worth checking out. Well worth checking out. Um, another one recently that I just started last few months visiting uh, their site is, um, I don't know how to pronounce this, D-I-E-M-25, uh, which is basically a collective that's got together to discuss what the alternatives will be post-European Union, right? after the demise of the European Union, which is looks like we're pretty much headed there. So sort of offering new perspectives of how as a community we can get together uh, locally and build up real movements coming up uh, and deal with some of the issues that we're going to have to deal with and we are dealing with. Um, another show that I check out um, is Enter the Bus, uh, Enter the Bus Saw with Sean Stone. Um, I don't necessarily watch everything that he puts out in, in its entirety, but I do check out what he puts out. And if it interests me, I do. Um, I do watch the shows, watch the episodes. And he basically does interviews and provides certain perspectives, gives a voice to people that in general don't have a voice or don't have a voice in mainstream media. Um, another podcast um, that I do check out would be the Joe Logan uh, Rogan experience. Uh, I don't check out everything that he does, um, but when he's interviewing, he's really focused on bringing people on and talking with them, and getting their perspective and their long podcast, two to three hours, right? Um, but I, you know, the people that I'm interested in, he does a good job of interviewing them, so it's worth checking out. Uh, having him having the podcast on your radar um, two other shows that I check out uh, everything that they put out um, they're both at RT okay just like Chris Edges I check out all of Chris Edges work and these other two shows together with Chris Edges make a triple set that is definitely worth checking out um, one of them being crosstalk, and this is sort of a panel discussion on geopolitics, uh, global, what's going on, really focused on the Middle East and Asia right now, but mainly focused on the Middle East and Europe um, because there's wars brewing, right? Uh, so they do an amazing job presenting the information in a, in a palatable way where um, sort of cuts through the BS, okay? That's on the political front, uh, so crosstalk on RT. On the economic front, um, the Kaiser Report on RT as well. They, you know, they put out a few shows a week, uh, maybe four, same with crosstalk, four or five. Uh, well worth checking out on the economics front, okay? Uh, the Kaiser Report, again, uh, the first segment, they provide sort of uh, summary of some of the things that have occurred, uh, a lot of chart discussion, and then they bring on for the second half interviewing someone and they present their perspective. And um, Kaiser Report, Crosstalk, and On Contact, uh, that triple set is a fantastic triple set uh, if you wanna know what's going on in the world. Um, two other news programs that I sort of check out, uh, one of them would be Reason TV. And I go there and they, you know, there's a lot of short videos that they put out. And if the topic interests me, I do watch those shorts and sometimes the longer segments. Um, so Reason TV is a pretty good source. And the other one is a, is a person that does sort of um, analysts, uh, anal sort of does analysis on 
certain topics. He picks the topics uh, regarding geopolitics and does his take. Um, and it's the Caspian Report. And um, he does, in general, a pretty good job. Uh, some of the stuff that I know where he's covering, where I know he's not presenting the whole picture, um, you know, I've caught him doing that sometimes. Uh, so I do take his work with a grain of salt, uh, especially with stuff that I don't know uh, the details of, right? I don't take his word as being set in stone uh, that covers everything, uh, but he does a pretty good job um, and it's worth checking out. Uh, and that was the Caspian Report. Um, some of the other sites that I use to get information, especially articles, sort of a broad range of news coming f coming to me from different sources, different writers, different uh, different journalists, I guess. Um, one of them is The Intercept. Um, so I do visit The Intercept uh, multiple times a week, and I read, um, especially read articles from writers, journalists that I really like, that I've been following for a while. And I do check out some of the articles from the other uh, writers that are there that are have that platform to present their information so it's a good source of info the intercept 100 percent uh global research i check out uh not all the articles but some of the articles and they do have a youtube channel where they put out videos uh so global research is worth checking out uh for sure um another one is um disinfo.com and i'll give you a little disclaimer on this because i was um I was sort of an authorized submitter of news on this info, or I, or I have been in the past. I haven't submitted anything for the last two years or so, two, three years, where I decided not to follow politics or not to write about politics anymore because I've sort of figured out for myself where we're headed and what can be done to sort of direct us down the right path instead of the wrong path. And I sort of talked about that in the politics video um, that is leading up to this, right? So this, this info is a good place and it's got, it's fun as well. It's got, uh, it covers everything, right? Uh, it covers entertainment, uh, media, news, geopolitics, economics, um, uh, and a lot of tribal stuff, community stuff, uh, some shamanism stuff. Uh, some esoteric stuff. It's a good source of info. I like it. Um, and the last thing that I would say is um, the one thing that I follow is WikiLeaks. 100%. If, uh, if you're not following WikiLeaks, you really don't know what's going on in the world. Um, and there's a reason why the mainstream media and the powers that be are trying to silence WikiLeaks. Um, you know, in the future, people are going to be looking at this period and uh, their jaws dropping as to what's really going on, uh, especially with the stuff with WikiLeaks and Julian Assange and Bradley Manning and Snowden and all the whistleblowers before them that have come along, uh, you know, telling us what our governments and corporations are up to. And as far as WikiLeaks goes, I do check out WikiLeaks on a regular basis, but I also check out articles put together by journalists and analysts that are presenting information that has come through WikiLeaks, right? Any information that's, or so-called news sources that are attacking WikiLeaks and Julian Assange on a personal level, uh, in general, you can consider those news sources to be compromised, uh, if you want to, <laughs> best word I can come come up with, right? They're, they're basically useless news sources if they, they're actually attacking WikiLeaks and uh, and Julian Assange because they're not really looking at the content that they're sharing, but um, they're sort of doing the bidding of the powers that be um, whoever WikiLeaks is exposing, right? Uh, where the information is coming from, okay? Uh, so those are some of my news sources. I check them out, uh, all of them out, all of them out, if not in a week, in a month, I've gone there multiple times. Some of them I check out multiple times a day, some of them multiple times a week. Uh, some I check out all their content, some some of their content, some I just want to see what their perspective is on it, okay? And I sort of piece together what I can and 
my interpretation and what I know uh, with the information that they're sharing. Okay, uh, so I hope this answers um, your questions for those of you who've been wanting to know what my news sources are, where I, you know, what I check out to be informed as to what's going on in the world on the economic front and on the geophysics, uh, geopolitics front, right? Geophysics is a different game. Uh, and on the geopolitics front, right? Um, so I hope this helps you out and I will have the links available um, in the description of the of this video if you want to check out some of these sources, okay? That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.